questions and answers from the works of Sri Aurobindo and the Mother. Flowers, Part 12, from the Mother, continued from Part 11. Another time, and this is even more amusing, but first I shall tell you a little about Clemson, which you probably don't know. Clemson is a small town in southern Algeria, almost on the borders of the Sahara. The town is built in the valley, which is surrounded by a circle of mountains, not very high, but nevertheless higher than hills. And the valley is very fertile, verdurous, magnificent. The population there is mainly Arabs and rich merchants. Indeed, the city is very prosperous. It was, for I don't know what it is like now, I am speaking to you about the things that happened at the beginning of this century. There were very prosperous merchants there, and from time to time, these Arabs came to pay a visit to Monsieur X. They knew nothing, understood nothing, but they were very interested. One day, towards evening, one of these people arrived and started asking questions, ludicrous ones besides. Then Madame X said to me, you will see, we are going to have a little fun. In the veranda of the house, there was a big dining table, a very large table like that, quite wide with eight legs, four on each side. It was really massive and heavy. Chairs had been arranged to receive this man at a little distance from the table. He was at one end, Madam X at the other. I was seated on one side, Monsieur X also. All four of us were there. Nobody was near the table. All of us were at a distance from it. And so he was asking questions, as I said, rather ludicrous ones, on the powers one could have and what could be done with what he called magic. She looked at me and said nothing, but sat very still. Suddenly, I heard a cry, a cry of terror. The table started moving and with an almost heroic gesture went to attack the poor man seated at the other end. It went and bumped against him. Madame X had not touched it. Nobody had touched it. She had only concentrated on the table and by her vital power had made it move. At first the table had wobbled a little, then had started moving slowly, then suddenly, as in one bound, it flung itself on that man who went away and never came back. She also had the power to dematerialize and rematerialize things, and she never said anything. She did not boast. She did not say, I am going to do something. She did not speak of anything. She just did it quietly. She did not attach much importance to these things. She knew they were just a proof that there are other forces than purely material ones. When I used to go out in the evenings, towards the end of the afternoon, I used to go for a walk with Monsieur X to see the countryside, go walking in the mountains, the neighboring villages. I used to lock my door. It was a habit with me. I always locked my door. Madame X would rarely go out for the reasons I had already mentioned, because she was in a trance most of the time and liked to stay at home. But when I returned from the walk and opened my door, which was locked, and therefore nobody could have entered, I would always find a kind of little garland of flowers on my pillow. They were flowers which grew in the garden. They are called Belle de Nuit, 
We have them here. They open in the evening and have a wonderful fragrance. There was a whole alley of them with big bushes as high as this. They are remarkable flowers. I believe it's the same here. On the same bush, there are different colored flowers, yellow, red, mixed, violet. They are tiny flowers like bluebells. No, rather like convolvulus. But these grow on bushes. Convolvulus is a creeper. These are bushes. We have some here in the garden. She always used to put some behind her ears, for they have a lovely smell. Oh, delightfully beautiful. And so she used to take a walk in the alley between these big bushes, which were quite high, and she gathered flowers. And when I came back, these flowers were in my room. She never told me how she did it, but she certainly did not go in there. Once she said to me, were there no flowers in your room? Ah, yes, indeed, I said, and that was all. Then I knew it was she who had put them there.